Hey guys, it's Stanford with Throws Updates Now, and I'm here with Team 973, the Gray Bots, uh, with their absolutely fantastic robot. We're going to be talking about their intake, their casketing elevator, and the transition to Swerve. They're running Swerve for the first time ever this season. I'm here with Joseph and Jacob, and we're going to be highlighting all that stuff. Stay tuned for this and more on another episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. So first, um, I think we're going to talk about um, your guys' elevator, and it's been really, really fast and effective here at the competition, so go ahead and take it away. Yeah, so going into the uh, season, we started looking at a pink arm, and as we were doing more of the geometry and more of the detailed design, we kind of came to the realization that we could get away with an elevator. It was something our team was more familiar with, um, examples in 2018 and 2019, um, where we pulled off an elevator pretty well. The kind of new thing here for us was putting it at an angle, um, so that was the only challenge we really faced when creating this uh, we're using the great elevator with off-the-shelf uh, products, which found which we found to be really useful um, to get these off-the-shelf and um, super easy to implement with uh, our machining capabilities with our various mills um, and other machines we have at shop. And so how are you guys powering this all down here? I also see you have a kind of interesting mounting solution, so if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, down at the bottom we have two uh, Falcon 500s, uh, running into a gearbox that we changed up from the stock West Coast products great elevator um, to allow for us to uh, really make this uh, carriage and overall elevator a lot smaller. Um, the recommended smallest uh, carriage width is 8 inches, but as you can see, it's a lot smaller than that. We did that by sacrificing some of the things like the, uh, int the power plate that comes with the stock great elevator. Um, and implementing a bit different of a solution for our rope and chain. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, the intake on the front of this robot and the wrist that powers it. So take it away. All right, so for the intake, uh, we went through a lot of different iterations of this. Uh, we started out with something similar to a 2018-style intake with the two side uh, grabbers, um, but then we... we quickly realized, especially after we saw the EveryBot claw and how good that was, we realized that you know something like that might be the way to go. So we um, implemented a couple of different designs of that, um, and we, we initially had uh, this, this right here was a roller, the, a powered roller. Um, so uh, that, that there was three rollers here. Um, we, we found that this was kind of big and awkward, and we didn't really need it, so we tried without it, and it, it worked just fine. Um, we have our, our cone intake up here at the top um, and our cube intake here at the bottom. And so I see that's like almost beyond comprehension how fast that is. But what level of automation is happening uh, when you guys are actually driving this? Yeah, so a lot of automation is happening here, uh, whether it's looking at different current senses or looking at the currents that the motors are pulling. Um, we really wanted to be able to automate it automate the sequencing as much as possible so our drivers had to do as little as possible. Um, we didn't do a ton of automation in the sense that we press a button and it scores a certain place on the field, but uh, we have presets for picking up just about everywhere on the field and scoring everywhere on the field. And from there, our drivers manually take control over it um, and do a great job at scoring those pieces on those uh, locations. Cool. Yeah, they've definitely been one of the most effective scorers here at the uh, 2023 Port Wainimi Regional. But now we're going to talk about something that's not specific to this regional, but it's a transition to Swerve. This is the first time these guys are ever running Swerve. All right. So, yes, this is our first time running Swerve at an actual uh, season competition. Um, we decided that if we were going to run Swerve, we needed to run an off season first. Um, and, you know, everybody was like transitioning to Swerve after COVID and all that. So we, just, we decided, you know, we tried it once. That didn't work out too well. But... Um, we we were gonna try it again and um, see see what happened because everyone else seemed to have it working just fine. So we wanted to, you know make sure that we got full advantage of this new new trend of the drivetrain. Um, so we we tried it in the off season last year. 
um, had really good success with it. We're very glad we did it in the off season first. We had a lot of issues. We worked out um, and and uh, figured out uh, like for example these covers uh, so we can easily swap out the sword module if it breaks. We have the plug all right here um, that we just unplug and take out the whole sword module and it takes us like six minutes so we could do it in a timeout. Um, so things like that we worked out in the off season. Um, to make sure that uh, we were ready to go with a new swerve. And uh, these module covers, are these like 3D printed or something like that? Yes. Yeah, so these are these are 3D printed sword modules. Uh, put a little number on it. Um, but the main purpose of them is actually uh, to case all in case all of the wires that are in here, and so we can unplug it easily all right here, and it's not all inside of the belly pan, so we can replace it if we need to. So an absolutely incredible robot. Deadly effective scoring. Um, definitely one of the robots to look out for at any future events at the San Diego Regional and probably championships. So thank you guys for allowing us to interview you. I'm Sam for First Updates Now, and good luck with the rest of your competition season. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. The Charged Up competition season is here. We have a ton of live Twitch and YouTube content coming to you. All of our uploads and archives, including shows, behind the bumpers, finalysis, and more, are available at youtube.com slash firstupdatesnow. Check out all of our live shows on Mondays and Tuesdays at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.